I'm walking because Jonathan, my best buddy on the planet, decided he was going to walk the first three days with me. And because I listened to my horses and they weren't in the mood that for me to feel safe riding and, and the safety is for other horses and riders as well. From the ground, I have absolute control. I can handle almost any situation. In the saddle, ponying a second horse, it gets a lot more challenging. I brought a cart. It's the one sitting there on top of a hay bale part way down the trail here. Um, I'm, I'm a bit kind of uh, adventurous. So at some point I'm going to take the cart down and hook the oldest one, um, the one with his butt facing us, <laughs> and put him in the cart. And if he's pulling and comfortable, I'm going to take a cart ride. If not, I'll, I'll probably ride most of it on, on one or the other. I have been preparing for a full year. I wanted to go the previous year and I realized my horses weren't in shape to do it. So I really put myself on a program. I walk them a mile up or ride them a mile up to a park that has a big, it's an old dairy farm. And I would walk them up to the, that field. I let them graze and then I hike for two hours up and down this really steep hill. It's about a 100 foot elevation change in at about a 30 degree angle. So I'm, I'm going up and down 12 to 16 times. That's about two hours. And then I go grab the horses and we ride home. So that's been our, it takes about four hours to get through all of that. And that's been our preparation for this ride. So we're, we know each other. Ah. One of the great things that has changed, for those that are listening, <laughs> in the time I've been doing that, it has changed me. And this dog was coming up and the owner was trying to hold him back and he finally looked at the dog puzzled and I was wondering what was going on. The dog comes up and he's rubbing on me and, and nuzzling and just really happy like you know, I just seen an old friend. And he said, I've never seen my dog do that. He always barks and growls at everyone. <laughs> So something about such close contact with the horses has changed something about me. And it's not just that dog. It's, if a dog doesn't like me, they got a bad dog. It's just been real fascinating. Even on this trail, the dogs that come by, just they're fine. I, like I said, I'm adventurous. I was riding my motorcycle home from a, a, a midnight kind of job and I got my leg caught between a car bumper and my motorcycle. And when Dr. Bump finally finished his surgery and, and getting me healed, he looked at the last x-ray and said, you've got degenerative arthritis in that left ankle. And if you stop walking, you'll lose it. And we can't fix it. You know, we just have to pin it shut and you'll be walking on a stiff foot. So I have, from 19, I've made sure that I'm living about two miles from where I work and that I walk every day. I'm an electronic engineer. I was on the first design team that made the very first cellular telephone. Well, that was E.F. Johnson, and lately I've been working for an outfit called uh, John Bean Technologies, and they made food portioners. Uh, those chicken sandwiches you get on, on certain manufacturers buns that fit so well it's our machine that cuts those at high speed so that you get this perfect product the right thickness the right weight everything ah that's a darn good question when i was growing up i had decided that i should listen to and follow they'll be fine they're not going to go far they're just looking for the best grass but thank you that i should listen to them and the advice that I got really put me in good stead, but there was one aspect of it that I wasn't expecting, that the advice came from their generation and that my generation, the hippie generation, the Vietnam guys, they changed the whole environment and that I needed to adapt to that, that you need to live in the culture that you're in and um, allow yourself to be yourself. I have survived everything and I'm coming out of it happier than ever. <laughs> I've had a lot of challenges. I grew up in a family of eight. We had no money. I, I was given a grant to go through college. 
Um, I did the first two years. I went out and worked four years, saved enough money to go back and, and earn a bachelor's degree. And that challenge, that work ethic, um, yeah. Oh, they'll pick them up. <laughs> that's the that's the uh, drag team, and yeah, they're fine. <laughs> In this current environment, with all of our worries about um, people coming here that are not Americans, um, technically I'm not either. All four of my grandparents, two Norwegians, two Germans, never became U.S. citizens. My folks are born here. I'm second generation American, and America is full of us. And uh, I, my life was saved by illegal Mexicans. I had fallen off my horse, a mailbox, great big brick thing, had rolling over on top of me. I'm in a wealthy area in Redmond, and I'm screaming for help. They were the only ones that came. <laughs>